Well, 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 you have finally got here. You are listening to the Erskine Music Podcast. Here by popular demand, we discuss life, culture, Christ, and of course, music. These half-hour broadcasts are perfect for a commute, coffee time, chat, or any other gap in your schedule where you want to put great content. So without further ado, let's join the conversation today, already in progress. Some more Bible verses in case Romans, wasn't, Romans 1 wasn't convincing enough for you. And then I'm going to go and show maybe a second part of this, and then if we have time at the end, which we probably won't, but I'll try to get as much of the professor's not the professor basketball player, but my professor friend, Nicholas Brown's perspective on this issue. And so let's get started. Uh, is homosexuality a choice? I would have changed that if this were my show, and it were not, but if this was my show in this initiated uh, podcast, I would have changed that to is homosexuality a sin? Everything is a choice, but we want to talk about what is righteous before God. When and he they, created everything, he said it was good. So, if, And by the way, Marcus Rogers has the best either microphone or voice of any podcaster or YouTuber that's out there. His voice is butter smooth. And if he wanted to go into radio or just do any type of thing, people, I would think people just believe what it is that he has because his voice is so smooth. Listen to the, listen to Marcus Rogers address this subject matter. Someone came out, right? And they're saying they're having these feelings. Where did those feelings come from? They didn't come from God because we clearly see that God is a God of order he has a plan. We talked about it the last time. The Bible describes, you know, those desires as vow, as unnatural. Um, so I think he's getting to something here that's vitally important. And I wanted to say that there's some unnatural desires that are being created. Well, the desire and the temptation, there's some unnatural. Uh, and I want to try to blend the two of those things together so that you guys will see where it is that, we're, that I'm going with this discussion. Your desire for something, the temptation. And even inviting the, those things into to one's life is problematic. And I'll explain to you, I'll explain to you a little bit more later. And so to me personally, from a spiritual aspect, and people have different opinions about this, you know, it's possible that the Bible, like the Bible's clearer, two flesh become one. So this is why we shouldn't be sleeping around with everybody anyway. But say, you know, I had my parents and say my mom was out there doing whatever and my father was out there doing whatever sleeping around with whoever, and those people were experimenting and experimenting with people who are on the down low, right? Those spirits, you become one with that. You come into agreement with that. And so it's possible. And when he said that there's people who teach differently with regards to that, I would take a different track than what he does with regards to this. Um, I, I believe that because of the nature of sin, all of our unrighteousness before God, all of those associations, all the ways that Satan tries to tempt us are brought into that category, not just in the area of sexuality, not just a particular thing that's attached to person after person after person, but I think there are cycles of sin that people find themselves in, and there's, quite frankly, um, I, I think that when you, when you talk about sin as this generational or demonic type of attachment that gets associated with people, you you de-escalate and you devalue the work of grace in a person's life. Why is it that I, I, in so many ways I'm so completely different than my family? Because if you looked at my family and you looked at my life, you would say, okay, well, Erskine's dad was a rolling stone. He did this, he did that, he's had several, and I'm not trying to call my dad out. I mean, if you know Mr. Senior Erskine, Papa was a rolling stone. Now he's, he's made a fantastic trajectory at this point in his life and his faithfulness and commitment uh, to his wife but because of that and because of the socioeconomics of the situation and we would just start listing factors well then Erskine should have been here's the direction that Erskine should have gone here's the the temptations and the the obstacles and the challenges that he would have faced and so therefore he should have gone down a particular route I think that it's dangerous when you go that direction and sometimes I feel like when people are giving explanations that have to do with, well, there's just a generational curse or there's a territorial demon or there's this kind of you know, sinful thing that attaches itself from person to person to person to person, they invalidate the work of grace that takes place as a result of the word of God being presented to me and the word of God being preached and the spirit of God taking and enlivening someone's heart to that. And so although I take a different track than Marcus Rogers here, I think that he's getting it. And basically, I want you to also see these two uh, men, two men, respectfully, 
who are at the top of this screen, they are shamefully embarrassing. And if you go to their churches and you know who they are, please leave their churches. Well, you know, those things can affect the children, right? Spirits, they, they can move, they can move freely. So when someone tells me, hey, I was born that way, obviously I tell them, look, you got to be born again. We were all mm -hmm. born in sin. I won't and deny that, I that maybe they have those feelings and have those feelings as a child. But that's where, you know, the spiritual aspect comes in. And I would suggest that they need deliverance. I wouldn't go in the route of deliverance ministry. I would go in the route of Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. Re read Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. We don't have time to get into it today. But that's the route that I would go instead of talking about deliverance ministry. So that's, that's a nuance there. But at least he answered the question. Look, where's your pastor at in this discussion? Where you at, pastor? Are you answering this question? Are you sitting before your people? Are you answering their questions? Are you preaching the word of God and not being afraid to answer these questions? At least Marcus and Rogers and I can agree about the fact that somebody should be speaking about this. People who have some type of spiritual authority should be speaking to this issue. Where are you at today? So, so, I, so, so I'm, I'm dropping ahead, that right. poll right now. Is homosexuality a choice? And, and Tyshawn, if you don't mind, I do want to ask a question yeah. to uh, the pastor. So, I did want to ask you guys, what would be the difference between a homosexual desire and a desire to, let's say, sleep with a bunch of women? So, uh, I'll, 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 so before I answer that, let me first invite some precision um, because I'm... Let's invite some precision. I typically answer the questions that I'm asked. And so with the question being... Um, is homosexuality a choice? There's one answer to give to that. If the question is, and then I heard it characterized as lifestyle and behavior. If the question is, is someone's sexual behavior a choice? Then you'll get a different answer from me because I do believe that everyone's sexual behavior is a choice. And so when we talk about homosexuality, we're not talking about a lifestyle. We're not talking about behavior. We're talking about innate sexual attractions. Actually, we're talking about both. Let me invite some precision so that we can... <laughs> and Romans 1 is so helpful to this. We're talking about both of those things in the midst of this discussion. Man, who I'm not going to call a pastor. I just, I cannot bring myself to do this. I know that I should. And this is why, this is why I can't be president of the United States. Because I'll break everything. And this is why I can't be president of the church. Because <laughs> I break everything. We're talking about both of those things and both of those things, whether it be innate desire within us. Uh, this is Psalm 51. We are born in sin, conceived in iniquity. That's what David is talking about. Even in our moment of conception, which life is from conception all the way to natural death, by the way, very, very biblically speaking, uh, it's the pro-life issue here. But it will affect both our innate nature and the choices that we make. And all of them have to be redeemed and the blood has to atone for both of those things. So don't invite precision so that you can invite confusion, sucker. And so I want to just invite that, that clarity um, as we move forward in the conversation. Um, you asked the question, do you mind repeating it? Well, that makes sense. So now that it's you, at the bottom you, of the you bring screen. that perspective and could you, re could you repeat that last statement again? You said homo, you said I guess you gave us the difference between homo yes. sexuality as so what a he was choice versus it being sexual versus BK is reminding me at least on that issue be kind that's why I can't get into community discussions like this they're nonsense to me sexual behavior yeah, sexual behavior yeah, this is a three hour and then what was the last statement pretty much what he stated was that it's innate sexual the innate sexual attraction attraction okay. right so going into it and did you want to keep in the direction you were going? Well, I, I'm going a, I'm to a hold it because I, I kind of want to get some more perspective before I ask my question, before I follow up with it. Yeah. No. OK, cool. Because I, th I think this is a, this is a big crux of the conversation here, because what we're trying to do is figure out what's wrong. And in the Bible, I think we can really pin down what's wrong as a sin. Right. Because what we're trying to do is as best as possible, not sin, live as righteous and holy as possible. So what really comes down to is homosexuality a sin. Yes. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. You know what? I'm, my respect level for Marcus Rogers actually grew a little bit because why he didn't just immediately just say, yes, it is absolutely a sin. Do they have his microphone turned off? Maybe he did. No, I don't think he did. I think he's just respectfully 
and he got three hours into this conversation and did not just blow a head gasket. Uh, I would not get three minutes into this conversation without saying, why are we still talking about whether or not homosexuality is a sin? It is absolutely a sin. And after I get done with this, as I said before, I'm going back to some Bible verses to show you guys all throughout the Bible, not just Romans 1, because there's a lot of people that want to try to argue and they want to say, well, that was just Paul. That was just Romans. That was just, well, you take that part of the Bible, then the rest of it is just, we're replete with examples of homosexuality and David and Jonathan and all these different things that are out there. And it's absolutely ridiculous. Let's keep going. Because if homosexuality is a sin, then it is clearly wrong. So let's get some perspective to that. I'll go right back here to you and Will to this one. Would you... De define or classify homosexuality as a sin i would no more classify homosexuality as a sin as i would heterosexuality when we understand human sexuality as a whole we've got to understand something and we've got to make sure that we don't conflate the bible uh, as some sort of guide to human sexuality because I just can't <laughs> i'm showing this to you and I, again i quoted fair use clause um criticism scholarship research i put my coat on today to try to calm myself down i'm gonna be professorial today uh so that i can kind of keep the comportment the natural comportment erskine music keep all the things on the track but i just cannot let him from the book of genesis just say there is no design there's no pattern to this there, god had a particular design in mind and it's just irrespective of homosexuality or heterosexuality that is absolutely nonsense i can't believe he looked into a camera look at his face in this camera i can't believe he looked in the camera and tried to just flat out lie with regards to this question i i don't understand how you did that i don't understand how you got away with that i don't understand how you got your face if this is your pastor and you're calling him pastor well first of all stop doing that but if this, if this is a man that you know and you go to his quote unquote church, stop going please do yourself and then tell other people stop going to a church and i want i don't know who this man is well that certainly gives a sense of why people enjoy this show very engaging very heartfelt we will return to the conversation in a few moments but first let's thank our sponsors and you for all your awesome support Moody Radio's Dawn and Steve Morning Show, Life Action Ministries, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and Holt International. Thanks so much to our partners who make such a difference. Thanks, Jason. This is Dawn. And this is Steve of Dawn and Steve in the Morning on Moody Radio. You can find us online at donandsteve.org, or you can listen through the Moody Radio app. And as friends of the Erskine Music Show, we always enjoy the variety of topics our friend has on his show. So, on behalf of our show, thanks Erskine for bringing great Christ-centered topics to the people. All right, let's get back to the show. But this I want to invite the man good. who is there, who I'm not calling a pastor, to come on my show, and I will not call you a pastor, you, but you are welcome to come on my show and try that nonsense on the Erskine Music Show. Or I'll come on your show. <laughs> give me, I don't know how many, many minutes you want to give me, but any minutes you give me, we gonna start cooking because it is not and when we try to make the bible be that we actually do violence to the bible we're not making the bible be that we're letting the bible speak to us about what it says you're the one who's making the bible be that so that you can live your homosexual lifestyle and live your homosexual spiritual influence in front of people you are a coward you're an apostate you are all of these different things and presenting yourself as such on this screen so that everybody knows who you are you're exposed by the very fact that you're trying to argue against what the bible clearly says um and so when we talk about the whole issue of sin i think one of the reasons that this issue has the church in a chokehold is because defining sin it's difficult for most people. And let me tell you why that is. When we when we look at the root of what is sin, sin is missing the mark. When you look in Romans chapter 3 and 23, you look in the original language, it simply means missing the mark. It's actually an archery term. And so when you talk about it's missing the mark. No, 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 no. Hang, hang, hang on a second. Hang on, Harmer. <laughs> oh, it is missing the mark. The standard is perfection based on the righteousness and the holiness of God, but it is transgression. It is breaking the law of God. For you to 
only narrowly defines sin as something where we're just missing the mark. Well, you know, we shot an arrow and we didn't quite hit the target, and so we don't quite know what the target is, is for you to obfuscate what clearly the Bible talks about in reference to sin. Homeboy, what in the world are you doing? No, 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 no. Listen, it is breaking the law of God. It is transgression. So God has revealed himself. God has clearly told us what is good, oh man. And we're taking what God has said is good and we're saying, well, I don't, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know. God never said anything about it. That's a lie. God never told us what the boundaries were. That's a lie. God never, God never explained to us that this would actually be sin. Do you remember in Leviticus chapter 4, since you've been reading Leviticus lately, do you remember in Leviticus chapter 4 when God is talking about unintentional, I hadn't even watched the comment section, so I just want to go ahead and let you know if you commented like 10 minutes ago, I hadn't even been watching the comment section. I told you the comment section is on and I want that smoke. I'll look at it here in just a second. But in Leviticus, they actually go through a sacrificial system for unintentional sins. There are people who committed sins and they didn't recognize that those were a sin at the particular time. And then later the revelation comes to them, but the unintentional sins nonetheless were still the sins. And so the law and the transgressor and the breaker of the law is guilty of that sin, but the law remains because it's a perfect standard of who God is and his righteousness. And so even if we didn't know the law, a la Romans chapter 1, even if we didn't know the law, we would still be guilty of breaking the law because we are transgressors of the law even when we don't have the law. <sighs> I wouldn't let you get away with that. You come on the Earth Community Show, I'm not letting you get away with that. I'm not letting you get away with that on this particular podcast, <laughs> much less would I let you get away with that on my particular podcast. The mark, you've got to ask yourself, what is the mark? Is that mark the same for everyone? Yes. Uh, <laughs> is that mark simply living out the thing that each of us has been called to be? Because truth is, is what may be sin for one may not necessarily be sin for. You just quoted Romans chapter three for all all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. He literally just took the very verse of scripture that denotes that everyone has sinned. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And for him to come back to try to confuse the issue to say, well, what may be sin for one person may not be sin for another person. I'll tell you what that looks like, my friend. The marital relationship that I have with my wife. When we make love in our relationship, that is not sinful because there's boundaries, there's law, there's things that clearly identify what the bounds of that relationship should be. Any type of sex outside of that is wrong. And so that's the only way where you would make a bifurcation where God has given us law and God has given us clarity and God has given us boundary. Operating within those boundaries and the way that God has given us to operate within those boundaries is the pursuit of righteousness, is the pursuit. But operating outside of that, homosexuality, bestiality, any of those type of things that you want to put forward as sexual deviance is outside the bounds of what God has said in his law. And so one act may be appropriate because one person is living or people are living it in the way that God has designed it to be uh, given. And then another is clearly identified as not being the standard of God's righteousness. That's the only bifurcation that we're making. But for you to actually use Romans chapter three, you must look, I say this all the time. I think the music industry does it to people. I think the music industry, especially the Christian music industry thinks most people are idiots. So they play the same songs over and over again and make us think that we actually like those songs. And I'm not saying that all the songs are bad, but I've just had the mentality that don't pee in my face and then try to tell me that it's rain. Don't do that. I know what you're doing. And I know what you're doing when you try to use Romans chapter 3 to tell us that there is a particular way that uh, it applies to some people and not all people. It says all people. And prior to this, in this particular episode, I said read Romans chapter 3 verses 10 through 17. And it'll tell you about the human condition at its core. I'm gonna let him continue for just a second. We're not gonna have for time. another. We're not gonna have. And time what for I all have this come to and understand is, is when we speak of being holy or speak of holiness, we have to understand that holiness is rooted in wholeness. This is a word salad. Holy. We're not talking about holy or holiness or holiness. You see what he's doing? That you look like an absolute buffoon. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be respectful. 
but the, what you're doing to the audience that is watching this and people who watch this for three hours, you're peeing in their face and you're trying to tell them that it's rain. Whole holiness, holiness. See the difference between those words? What I'm talking about is holiness, not holiness. You get it? No, we got it a long time ago. You're an apostate. You're a false prophet. You, sir, if you don't repent of your I don't know who you are. Are you in the camera? I don't know if you're looking at the camera this way or if, you, if I'm looking at you because of your video this way. You, sir, if you do not repent of your sin, you will spend eternity in hell. And I say that with all the compassion that I can muster. Your argument is just completely fallacious. But let me just, as a uh, follower of Christ who knows that the grace of God, the, the love of God, the cross and the effect of the cross can reach even you, sir, so that you may come back and repent of your sins and do another podcast where you apologize for everything that you're saying on this particular broadcast. And I don't care if, if YouTube has to shut my channel down for doing st stuff like this. Um, so be it. I'll go to another platform. But we cannot have people who are out there saying ridiculous things like this and nobody say anything to them about where you at, pastors? Where you at, pastor? Where you at, Christian? What are you doing with your podcast and your channel? Honesty, authenticity, clarity about who each of us I gotta has stop. been. I'm sorry. I got to stop. First of all, I don't have time to get into all this at this moment. But second of all, I want to actually look at the comment section for just a second. See if there's any questions that I need to answer. Oh, man, we're at an hour and four. I'm going to give you some more Bible verses. Then I'm going to go to the very end of this. <sighs> Mike Ron. Mm, yeah. So that was with regards to Marcus Rogers. All right, let's get back to some Bible verses here. I don't know. I, when I say run out of time, it's not because I don't want to spend time with you guys on this subject matter. It's because I only have so much um, available time on my stream yard. But let's, let's, let's just go through some Bible verses. I mean, they're, they're all right here. There's 25 verses, and I put all of these in the context of our dis discussion. 1 Kings 15, 12. Is prostitution wrong? Has it always been wrong? The male shrine prostitutes from the land and got rid of all the idols and the ancestors that he made. First Kings chapter 15, uh, verse 12. I forget which king that was, but that was one often the, something the kings would do. Um, in Leviticus 18, do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. That is detestable. All right. Romans 132. We already read that. Romans 127. We read that. And the, the verses in Leviticus, because it talks about holiness and, and why he was even trying to use that type of terminology about whole and holiness and his wholeness. I don't even he's obviously never read the book of Leviticus because the book of Leviticus is replete with examples of what God's holy standard is. When he talks about missing the mark, that is transgression. It is breaking the law of God. If God never said it in his law. And the last time I checked, even the Jews recognize the Pentateuch as the law of God. If God never said it in his law, we would still be accountable to it from God's righteous standards. But since we are accountable to it because he's revealed it to us, we're even more condemnable, condemnable because we do not apply that law to our lives and live under the aspect of that law in our lives. We do not submit to that law in our lives. And so therefore, you're even more guilty of what it is. And then as someone who's an influencer, I'm not going to call you a pastor, but as someone who's an influencer trying to tell other people that it's okay to not do what God's law is saying, you are heaping judgment upon yourself. The fire of hell will burn so much hotter on the day of judgment for you, sir, than it will other people. It's detestable. So I'm not even going to go through these verses in, in uh, Leviticus. They're there for you to read. You can scroll through that on your own. But I do want to look at this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? You said, Erskine, why are you on this show talking about the fact that this, this man is not going to even go to heaven? Why are you on this show talking about the fact that he's an apostate? As I will other progressive folks that are out there. Just give me time. Just give me time. <laughs> I'll get to the Derek Webbs of this world. I'll get to the Flaming Grants of the world. I'll get to all the folks that are out there doing all the different things. That they, they want attention. So first of all, I don't talk about them a lot by name because they want attention so they can build their brand because I'll show you with Maverick City and some of the other folks that are out there. It's about money, 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 money. So anyway, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. But they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. That's what's happening for a lot of folks. Not on the Erskine Music Show, but uh, other folks who are not watching the Erskine Music Show are getting deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, 
for men who have sex with men. Hide your kids. I mean, it's in the Bible. The kids may at some point be curious enough to read the Bible and then come across these verses and be like, oh, wait, neither the sexually immoral, that's a broad category that encompasses a lot of things that are going on in the pornographic industry and um, our baby killing industry in these days and a lot of different things that are related to that. But he goes on and, and drills down and makes this a little bit more plain and clear for us and expands it. Nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men. Who's not going to heaven? It's men who have sex with men. So this person claims to be a spiritual leader. And so here's the discussion that people have. Well, if you're not committing the act, but you're living celibate, then that should, right? That, that, that should be enough. That is not enough. Nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanders, winners, winners, inherit the kingdom of God. That and that is what some of you were. Well, you probably already know that when you hear that sound, there's music on the way. After all, this is kind of a music show. Sit back and enjoy. All the music can be easily found on your favorite digital distribution channels. Turn up the volume and here we go. simply say that there is a transformation that takes place. The person is in Christ. He is a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. 
what new has come the holy spirit has come into a person's life to convict them of sin a la john chapter 14 a la john chapter 16 and to convince them of the righteousness of christ to convince them convince them of their need to repent of their sin and to put their trust in jesus and the grace to be able to do that not to continue to live in that lifestyle or condone that life or condone that inherent uh, as people would say intrinsic sin nature within us no but you were washed you were sanctified you were justified in the name of the lord jesus christ and by the spirit of our god first timothy 1 8 through 11 and we know that the law is good if one uses it properly that's what we're talking about the law and we also know the law is made not for the righteous but for lawbreakers and rebels ungodly sinful and all the so many words here that just I, there's an episode in all of these words the unholy and irreligious and for those who kill their fathers or mothers uh, for mur murders for the sexually immoral for those practicing and notice in two separate lists here he talks about sexual immorality and lest anybody think that it is just the act of sexual immorality but the practice of homosexuality as long as you don't practice homosexuality as long as you don't act out these desires that are taking place in life then we're, we're actually free and so they will seize on a verse like this and they will say but for those practicing homosexuality for slave traders all those different things and whatever is contrary to sound doctrine they say well it's the people who practice that so we're just going to be celibate we're not going to act it out but this is going to be a part of our identity oh man i want to tell you um romans one has dealt with that um mark chapter 10 verses 6 through 9 but at the beginning of creation god made them male and female for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh so that they are no longer two but one flesh therefore what god has joined together let no one separate the creation mandate does explain some of the the nature of how this has all gotten broken and this has all gotten confused uh first corinthians chapter 7 verse 2 but since sexual immorality is occurring each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband and we can continue to go on romans 3 8 through 10 i'd, I'd reference that a little bit earlier but I, those are 25 verses i want you to read through those verses i'm going to do this really quickly here there's a a point in this interview that and i'm already at an hour and a uh, 10 minutes i don't even think i have that much space left on my account so here's what i want to do i'm going to play about four minutes of this and then we'll, we'll get out of here as quickly as possible but this is my buddy who's at mid-america seminary he's a professor and i'll be honest with you guys like I, I studied greek studied hebrew uh it's been a while since i studied greek and hebrew and so i'll, I'll do that in a particular text that i'm working through if i'm going to be preaching on a particular week but my greek skills and parsing skills and attention to detail in the text has gotten a little bit lax because i have so many bible tools that will just parse verses for me i'm not carrying around lexicons anymore and trying to parse every single word that i come across and seeing the endings of things and how they they operate and so my friend is was gracious enough to sit down and have a discussion with me and say there's some greek things that i think maybe you need to pay attention to uh, that are how people are trying to use the text to say well as long as we don't practice as long as it's just something that is in our minds or something that is in the realm of temptation we're good but it, and so i want you guys to hear this about four minutes four or five minutes of this let's get it gentlemen don't just take my word for it here's a man who studied in the halls of academia here at mid america seminary professor pastor brother and friend nicholas brown that's probably way more uh i'm not that fancy well okay what, your answer is fancy what's the question what, what, help us question, help you know. us parse out this whole desire versus desire of temptation versus actual acting out in temptation because these pastors on here are talking crazy these days and so they need to figure out that even their temptation is a denotation of sin well i'm not yeah. uh, why am i talking yeah. about it? you talk yeah. about it yeah you're right on so yeah the the idea that i think we've all been told and, and growing up in church is it's a sin if you give in to the sin the action but the desire or just the fact of being tempted is not sin it's only sin if you actually do yeah. it right and i would say that's actually, i've heard that as well yeah and that's but i would say that's not theologically accurate that's not true uh oh you you sin at a desire level and an action level and 
the fact that you would be tempted to sin reveals sin in you still that still needs to go through the Colossians 3 mortification process. Mm. So, um, and I think that if you're taking it, let's go easy, easy explanation. Let's look at Jesus, right? Jesus had a human nature, not a sinful human nature. He had a human nature. We, Erskine and I, and everybody else, have a sinful human nature that we receive because of the fall. We're born with it, we, or we're conceived with it. We have a sinful human nature. We are guilty. Um, we, we rebel. Um, and the old man, the residue of that, uh, call it original sin, inherited sin, that's still on us. We're still battling with that. All right? Now, Jesus had a human nature, meaning um, he was human, just, you know, he was a man, but he was also God. So he did not have a sinful human nature, he had a human nature. Adam and Eve in the garden, before they fell, they had a human nature, not a sinful human nature. They had a human nature that had the capacity to sin, but they did not have, they were not, they were not um, created with a sinful human nature yet, because there would be no fall. You know, but now Jesus has a human nature, um, and when Jesus was tempted, he not only was did not give in to the temptation physically, but inwardly there was no landing pad for the temptation in Jesus' heart. Jesus never, never once thought for one moment, you know, what if I did say, what if I did turn these stones to bread, right? What if I did? You know, there was never a place for him to salivate, to desire sin. Um, there was never any landing pad for sin in his heart. For us, there is. So, can we sin? Um, uh, can we sin by just being tempted? Is that does that reveal sin still in us from original sin? Yes, actually. It's and you sin. say yes. Yes, there's that still reveals sin in us. That isn't to disparage us. That's meant to actually remind us for how much we're still in need of the gospel and how much that still need a, a work still needs to happen how much we still need to um to mortify the flesh you know colossians 3 5 the mortification of the flesh is not just action but in colossians 3 5 we have desire work we mm. have pathos and epithemia mm. that word pathos gone professor old, gone he cooking he cooking now he cooking the old some of like your King James translations, they would use the word concupiscence. Concupiscence! Which is that sexual desire, sinful sexual desire, pathos. Um, uh, you know, my LSV uses like passions. It's called the passions, but concupiscence is what you see like older English versions using. Um, the word epithemia, mine says evil desire, my LSV. Um, so these are desire words. So those are things on the inside. Those are the landing pad places. Mm. We still have to actually repent at that level. Now, so what does that mean? For let's take homosexuality, right? So we have this whole thing where there is this idea that we created. Well, we didn't create it, but it's out there. It's called you know side B Christianity, or the we call it the new traditionalist that says as long as you don't do the action, right? The internal temptation is something that. God uses as a um, as as a unique thorn in your flesh, and it's meant to grow you in godliness. So, if you have homosexual desire for the rest of your life, which usually that's not the word used. Usually, the word is attraction or orientation for the rest of your life. People would say, as long as you don't act on it, experiencing that internal temptation for the rest of your life is something godly. That the celibate, yeah, yeah. And, but as long as you're living a celibate life. And then that, then the people will say, that's actually, they'll actually use that as like, that's something that's sanctifying me. Gabe, it's celibate. Yeah. But I would say, no, you can never call something sin and say that God wants you to have that, right? God's call is that we would put to death what is earthly in us, right? Matthew 5, 48, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. There you go. Yeah. So you have to... Be holy because I am holy. You can't call yourself, um, you can't say it like, well, I have a same-sex attraction, and if Jesus never takes it away, or it doesn't lessen in my life, that um, God means that to happen, to make me joy in him, this is my unique form of flesh, I would say, no, you're actually saying that God is okay with sin reigning in you. He's not okay with that. that we have come to the end of this episode. 
don't miss a final word from Erskine. Hey guys, tell your friends about this show. And as always, I look forward to your interactions. Please contact us as you are able. We love to hear from you. Okay, friends, let's go and make a difference.